Hey, PFC Nation. Tom here. This is Al. It's Tiki. This is Haas. Thanks for listening to the show. Just wanted to ask you guys to please rate us a five star on iTunes. Rate and review the show. Goes a long way in helping us grow. And obviously, the more we can grow, the more we can give back to the PFC Nation. The more we grow, the more we show, guys. Get it? We're growers, not showers. <laughs> I was going to allude to that. There's something like we're all bigger now. Is that good? <laughs> well, look, either way, guys, uh, we need those reviews. They help us big time. So please. Hell yeah, we're still going out. This is going in it, dude. This is going to be an intro for the next 10 episodes. I just Love want to hear it. the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Into the show. Thank you for support. Peace. One love. It was one night, no pillow, in the cell, by myself, <laughs> doing it live, in, doing it big, one bed, one man, there was holes in the wall, by myself. <laughs> oh, awesome. What up, what up, everybody, welcome to PFC 238, we are in here, we're going to be talking Premier League Match Day 35 review, as well as, of course, the FA Cup semi-final matches, two of them. Um, over this past weekend, then we'll wrap up with some world footy and some world news real quick. But let's open it up with the current reigning champions. It pains me to say this. It kills me to say this. Manchester City receiving a guard of honor today from Swansea City. And we all expected uh, Man City to, to, to win this game, but uh, 5 nothing, man. This was, this was uh, I guess, typical Man City. It's still going. The party's still going. This was utter domination right here bro they had a thousand and fifteen passes in this game <laughs> like, if they, that should give you a sense i mean most teams average like 500 or so you know what i mean but yeah, for them the to have to, to damn near double that absolute domination and the thing is five different players scored <laughs> like, that's insane that shows the true quality of the team yeah, uh, look, the, the, they they won the league with five matches in hand. That right there is absurd. But this is the type of game that basically is the pinnacle. The, this is this is the type of game that describes the entire season. Everyone is was involved. The, the <laughs> passing, the shooting, the, everything about this team, I just love. I mean, for the fact, as much as I hate the fact that I, I have to root for them, this why do you have to root for them, Huss? Hold up, Huss, you got the lobster face, dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what happened? I heard you laughing. I just noticed. I was wondering what Tom was laughing at. <laughs> got the lobster face. Oh. Yeah. I, there was a what lot of coaching. What are you doing today, Huss? There, there was a lot of coaching this week because it's April vacation. Oh, snap. There was a lot of coaching. There was clinic Damn. outside. Then there was the private <laughs> sessions. Then there was the games. Oh, my lot. goodness, bro. That Irish spring house? sun. That spring sun <laughs> got you. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, I see you trying to you trying to blend in over there. It's a little bit dark. You try yeah. to make the setting nice. Maybe so maybe I'm just blushing. Maybe I'm just really embarrassed. You don't know. <laughs> I was just blushing with this whole face. See, my lips, <laughs> my lips are so chapped. Like I can't even tell. Like, like right. Ah, get yourself like, some Vaseline. <laughs> get, get salad. Nah, I don't need Vaseline. Just need the bills. Yeah. Appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> um, Man, City, Man City's domination. Um, <laughs> Dude, yeah, there's not there's not much in this game, man. Like, obviously, we can sit here and uh, pour all kind of laudits over Man City, but man, I'm I'm enjoying. You know, people will say, "Oh, watching Man City is getting boring," in the sense like you know they're gonna always win, but the way they're going after it, man, they're going after the record that Chelsea set in uh, I think 2009-10 or 2008-9 um, for goals scored in a single season. I think it's 103. Um, so they, uh, they verbally said they were going for that record. Pep's going for it. Um, it's trying, it's trying to be the greatest cool. team. Yeah, man. They're, they're trying to be the greatest team. I liked how um, the two IU brothers started for Swansea. I thought that they'd be able to pull out a, at least one goal. <laughs> yeah. like, I was just thinking, like, chemistry, maybe they'll work it out. Um, didn't happen, man. This was utter domination. 
I mean, Kevin De Bruyne's ping from like 30. Mawson, oh my, my boy God. Mawson, you got to step. You cannot give KDB that much time and space. He will punish you. He showed you why he's in the running for EPL Player of the Year. Well, he, I, I believe it was announced that Salah actually got it. I'd have to double check that. Uh, Salah got a PFA, which oh, is the PFA. players. Um, but then the FA is going to do it at the end of the season as well. Yeah, he's just in the running. He's in the, he's in the conversation. Um, look, this, <laughs> this team, um, they're also, we have to remember that they did it without their starting left back, Mendy, who's been hurt forever. Uh, they're also going to spend another 150 to $300 million, or sorry, million pounds this summer. Agreed. And almost everybody on this team <laughs> is at 25 years or younger. Uh, I mean, obviously, except for, you know, maybe like yeah, a, yeah. a company or yeah, yeah. And then, then um, David Silva, stuff like but they're still playing at a high level, so you can keep them, but they're just going to keep on buying younger players. They're going to have an army. They're, they'll be able to field two teams. Dude, so Does if it, you guys have been listening to PFC for a long time, fans out there, listeners out there, you know we discussed this, I think it was last season or maybe even two seasons ago, we're talking about how Manchester City is setting up this worldwide global network of professional clubs, you know, the ownership of Man City. They have a club in, uh, in the MLS. They have a club in Australia. And I forget, I think they have a fourth club in Asia somewhere. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But they're starting to draw talent from those pools. So in America, they're going to develop American talent that's going to get shipped over. In Australia, they're already starting to ship over some of the youth talent in Australia. Uh, Bro, they, got, to, to, they, got to, clubs, they got clubs in Narnia. These dudes are taking over, man. Dude, <laughs> Narnia. It's crazy, man. They're setting up this whole worldwide network. And there's nothing like it's it's so hard to compete with that. Like you can as a club, you know, a, a big club, you set relationships up with smaller clubs, you call them feeder clubs. And if they have talent, you have an agreement with them that you get, you know, first dibs on their talent in exchange. You either play a friendly or you give them funding or you loan yeah. out some of your bright talent to them. So I, this is I always Chelsea Vitesse. Yeah, yeah relationship. Mm -hmm. exactly. So this has always existed. We see it with Bayern Munich and Juventus right now. They keep swapping players, but it's never existed where there's actually it has existed where there's, you know, a Manchester City, America, Manchester City, Australia. I think IX did that with IX Cape Town in South mm. Africa. But well, just look towards uh, Red Bull. Red Bull's doing that with multiple teams. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But the funding behind Man City is what's going to set them apart. You know, the ownership group with all that oil money is just going to pour so much money into talent. They, they upgraded their youth facilities. They got Un unlimited resources. Unlimited, man. All right, enough. We can go and crazy about Man City. This got you know, Zeus, man. Cost, cost a lot of people this weekend. <laughs> fantasy ducats. <laughs> I love it, dude. Mr. PK, great shot. Oh, my God. He killed me. He was my captain. <laughs> me oh, too, so Buzz. Great. <laughs> Slowest <laughs> run-up ever. You want to talk about terrible PK run-ups? Don't go this slow. It's so predictable which side <laughs> you're going to. It's too much time to think about the shot. Dude, it's Spe the name. Speed up the run. It's the Neymar, it's the Neymar style. Right? I guess it's a Brazilian no, thing. Right no, now. no, no, no. That's not Neymar. At least ne Neymar approaches it weird. He like runs up to the side, but at least he like picks up some pace before he shoots the ball. This dude, it was like the slowest he jogged up, he trotted. It was a trot up to the ball. <laughs> yeah, you almost Zaza. It was a mini Zaza. <laughs> yeah, when <laughs> when I saw that, because look, this week I'm I've actually went down to second place. I'm five points behind. I I only went in with seven players. I knew that uh, I was going to be struggling, but almost like everything went wrong. Uh, Burnley let up a stupid goal. Just Liverpool stupid two goals. I should be having points from there. And then when I saw the Jesus miss penalty, because if you get the minus two. And then you get the four points for the goal. That's a six-point swing. And I had a captain, so that's 12-point swing. Hey, hey, hey. This I isn't the, the Red Lobster fantasy hour. Okay. I should, be, <laughs> I should be in first by seven points. At the okay, carried away over here talking yeah, fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy's dead to me, all right? It's fucking yeah. dead. Yeah, be Brutus, not Jesus. Brutus stabbing me in the back over here. <laughs> Speaking I of Brutus, <clears throat> let's get into Arsenal 4, West Ham 1. The Arsenal fans are the Brutus who decided to stab their manager in the back. To the <laughs> what are you talking about, Doug? It's stepping down at the end of the season due to Better. Arsenal being great. Guys, like Tom, guys like freaking Arsenal fan TV, 
all those Whoa. dudes, man. This legend Whoa. of a manager stepping down, and we yeah. all Tom. He they, should. They, you, guys, you guys wanted to stay. What? What you gotta say? When you said, "What are you talking about?" You're acting like oblivious to what's been going on for the last few years. This, this, we have shirts that say Wagner in, Wagner out. Who? PFC. They say Wagner. I don't know who Wagner so is. Buy the shirt. <laughs> Wagner. Whatever. Arson. But what I'm saying is, you're acting oblivious to the situation. The fans have treated Arson like he's a scrub. <laughs> and what have you guys been calling him for the past five years? A scrub. Look, no, he's a legend. No. There's no doubt Arson is a legend. But you, and when I say you, I mean Liverpool fans. Man United fans, Chelsea fans, Man City Spurs fans. They want Venga. It's been a taunt that they want Venga to stay because they know that they know what to expect. The same mediocrity. And for me, I still don't believe this news. This this I don't know if it's a hot take or not, but I'm not convinced Venga's leaving next year. I'm not convinced he's stepping down. He's he still wants to finish. I I think he still wants to finish his contracts. He's always said that he finished out his contracts. I understand that there's been pressure, but Here's my conditions, yeah. I believe Arsenal will go on to win the Europa League. And Whoa, hot take. Yeah, I, I do. I think we're going to go on to win the Europa League. And You're beating that, Atletico Madrid? And, and I think Wenger will announce a comeback. Like, it's only one more year. <laughs> we're back in Champions League. Like, now is the call time it a comeback. the club needs. Yeah, dude, I'm not convinced that Wenger is going to leave at the end of the season. So, Dude, you are, you are the victim of intense... He- Trauma and abuse, bro. He's a vampire. No, man you, never man. goes away. I'm talking about you, bro. No. You are a scarred individual to the point where you're like, the beatings will never be over. Tom, the beating's <laughs> over, bro. It's you not. You guys made it. You're going to walk through the tunnel towards the light, and all the pain's going to stop. If that is the case, y'all should be scared. Y'all should be scared real of scared. scared of a spineless, Latin, no identity Yo. club. Dude, there's nothing to be oh, scared no, of. You I know why? Man wait United. Wait Simeone comes up in here. Dude, he's not going to come over. You know why? There's okay, no wait till Ancelotti comes up. Then what? I pray to God you get Ancelotti. <laughs> I'm <laughs> praying you get Ancelotti. So my theory can finally be proven that this oh, guy you. is good Everybody's at managing high class we, talent. Other there than Man go. City, we play the best football going <laughs> no, no, forward. No, no. Time we out, need Tom. to address the, the, the defense. Whoa. Time out, well, what? Let me jump on that statement. Dude, I used to say the same thing about United. And United, when Fergie stepped down, United had won the Premier League. Arsenal has finished outside of top four two years in a row. Never happened under Wenger's watch. Two years in a row. And he's stepping down to a team that has a struggling Mustafi. Nacho Monreal is your best defender, just to let you know. Because struggling. Your goalkeepers are a mess. Yep. Berrien is probably leaving going to Spain very soon. Your midfield is shocking. Maybe one or two players. Your striking force looks great now. It's awesome. but Especially with the, the way Welbeck is playing. <clears throat> the issue is that you're assuming the way Wenger had you playing is Arsenal football. But as soon as he leaves, you're going to realize that's Wenger football. You're now going to have to re-identify Arsenal football, which is exactly what Man United fans are going through right now. We're bitching about Mourinho's show. We're making cup finals. We're winning trophies. But the way we play, it's not that same popcorn football. Actually, that popcorn football has moved over to the blue side of Manchester. Careful what you wish for. Look, I'm it's still I'm I'm happy Wenger's out because it was a tumultuous situation. Arsenal was getting worse. I don't think there's a Premier League without Arsenal. I grew up my whole life watching Arsenal. So as much as I hate on them, I think it's important to have a competitive Arsenal for the health of English football. But Man, you guys are in for the next two or three years. It's it's going to be ugly, man. It's and, be uh, ugly. You know what? Yeah, I know that's what you're wishing on us. I know, but no, you're nervous. Wish, the inside, fact, Chelsea, inside you're it. nervous because, because no one knows what's coming. I'm a little nervous myself, too, um, Dude, because I don't I'm know not- what's coming. But it was good to see like fans actually clap for Venga and actually give him some love. Especially they like should. My, my theory was that the team was going to go on and win 4-5-0 just because of the timing of it. I, I didn't like the fact that he didn't start a bombing and Lacazette at the same in this at the same time. Uh, but you saw once they both got on the field together, they exploded for goals. Yeah, they did, man. Absolutely, that chemistry is brilliant. And I'm not nervous about Arsenal. I'm nervous about just Liverpool to, and Man on, City. Just to jump on to what Tiki was saying about we can't. We're not nervous about Arsenal because I think a good analogy, a uh, good similarity, would be Liverpool, where Liverpool did fall into that. Eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth, fourth range, 
And they need a top manager, Klopp, to bring in not just his skill, but his energy to change the, the change belief. Change the philosophy. Which is why I want Simeone. And that still took two and a half years or so. And a very lucky, tra- not very lucky, but I mean, <clears throat> uh, very fortunate, fortunate uh, transfer with Salah. Because without that, they're probably not, without Salah, I can't even say that Liverpool's in fourth right now. No, I That's such a great shot, House. That's such an honest shot, man. And tell me, we're not, like, you always have this chip on your shoulder about Arsenal. I think it's because Arsenal struggled for so long. But I, I, I trust me, man, I'm not nervous about Arsenal. Not because I don't respect Arsenal, but because... Because we haven't hired so a many... new coach yet. Yeah, That's because, why. exactly. The, you haven't got a new coach. There are players leaving, players coming in, players who just came in. You don't, you don't know. They're up in the air now. So, like, there's... Nothing to be nervous about yet. If you guys get Simeone, I'll admit on this show I'm nervous. But you're probably not going to because the club is so tumultuous right now. The fans are divided. Nah, Brad, now nah, we got your that. Your boardroom, too. Your boardroom is divided. We got that as paper well. and we got that history, man. Yeah, but at the, it's, at a, it's a very attractive job. But at the same time, this is going to sound a little fugazi. This is something I read. And it was just kind of like something I read. And you I saying just, fugazi sounds fugazi. No, no, no. I, I just I wish, <laughs> I, I wish I jotted down the names and everything. But someone was saying that. Uh, Arson wasn't actually the problem in a way. It was the fact that they lost people in the back room who would go out and buy the players that Arson wanted. When that person left, Agreed. I think who it was, he wasn't getting the quality of plays that they got. Because look at look at the team now and look at the team that you had back in, let's say, 2005. Yeah. These were world-class talents back in mid-2000s. Right now, you have maybe Ozil, depending on the day he wants to show up. Maybe Mkhitaryan, if he can re-find his form. And then after that, who, uh, Aubameyang, if he keeps it up. But after that, who's world-class? Okay. But a new manager... Look, we've often seen new managers come in and players play above their level. We saw what Klopp did with Liverpool. That's a primary example there. You guys uh, have James Milner playing left back all season long, still qualified for Champions League. Best so, left back in the world. So there's, there's, there's a certain way that a certain manager, which Arsenal require, who needs to boost the morale, needs to boost the, the defense, address the defense and what's happening there. But in general, when a new manager comes in, man, like you have that grace period, even for an LVG. So I'm not saying no, that that's a, that's... someone's going to come in and – automatically replace Wenger as a legend and and do half of what Wenger's done for English football and football in general. I'm just saying that it's it's been time for a change. I still I still don't believe it's actually going to happen, honestly, but I hope it does and when Wenger leaves, I'll I'll clap my hands, I'll say thank you for what you've done for the club, but man, like this should have happened 5 years ago. We're behind Ooh. everyone because I- this this should have, this is well overdue. This is well overdue. You guys know it too, man. Like this, I don't know about five. The only though. reason, the only reason he's managed to keep the his role is because of the owner and because of his legacy, because of what, because of his history, his resume. But if we're talking about recently, and recently as in the past five years, Wenger, like other than like FA Cup. I mean, what, what, what this Arsenal he, team in terms of FA performance Cup, has been declining? He's bringing FA Cup and Champions League. So I don't, know, I don't know if I can agree with five years. I mean, maybe the last two, three years I can agree with, but not five. Man, I've, I've seen it for a long time, the, the, the dissension of this the Arsenal decline. team from, from where we were. That's what you have to look at. It's like but a lot of people compare it like, oh, you guys are making Champions League. It's okay. well, we're actually challenging for the league. We're undefeated. How do you go un- from an undefeated season, knowing how to have success in the league, to all of a sudden now top four is your trophy? You know what Talk I mean? Talk to United. So, Talk to Manchester United. They had, a know, fit- they had the best manager that we've ever seen, and then he left, and then it was just kind of been bouncing around since then. They had to get maybe – Because I'm talking about a mentality shift. Man I, I United know, hasn't but, had well, that mentality well, shift. Well, of, what I'm okay, talking about – expectations are Champions League. No. Man United's expectations every year is to win the league. Every year. That's why they spend so much. But I understand that. But at the same time, when you say get rid of Arsene five years ago, you don't know who you're going to get in, instead of him. Now, I might if, get Klopp. I might get Pep. But, or you might not. Okay. That's the thing. I'll take, they, I would have taken that risk. Because if you don't get those players, uh, the, sorry, those managers, 
this team could be worse than sixth place right now because when it comes down to it, United, when Ferguson left, they were bouncing around. They got top – well, they got a top manager, LVG, but he was a little past his prime slash it didn't really work out. Uh, and Moyes didn't really work out, obviously. But they had to go out and get maybe the first or second best manager in the world to regain success. I don't find Arsenal in the position to get one of the top three managers in the world. I really don't. So because they you all get, have jobs. But, but, I but mean, no, still- even if they didn't, though, even if they didn't, Arsenal, if they, I think Arsenal gets the eighth best manager in the world, and you don't know if they're going to have the same success as Arsenal. I know you want the change, but at the same time, you what very you well could- What do you write Wenger then, guys? Because then that's, that's the true question, right? Like, if, 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 if Pep is number one right now, Jose second, whatever, flip those, like CR7, Messi, and then who's third? Well, I Maybe mean, Allegri, a guy like that, or, you know, someone who's been Zizou. He's won two Champions Leagues in a row, whatever. Like, what do you rank Arsene Wenger in terms of managers? Because for me, again, I see a number of managers who are out there who, they, look, they may not be, they may not replace his legacy. Because, come on, man, who really will replace Wenger's legacy? But are they quality candidates? But it also depends on who, which manager can deal with the situation from the from the back room. Take that risk. Have some who balls, can, man. Who can Have get some balls. FA Cups. You know who, what you're getting can, with Wenger. Who can keep that that streak going with uh, top four when barely spending fifty million or more in a whole summer? Hus, you a know, lot I'll of those managers. Really need be, to spend. Remember how we were discussing Chelsea last week and how up down up down they are and how it's their system to be that way and yes. that. They'll hire a manager. If he's successful, cool. If, he's, if he fails, he's fired. And then they don't really raise the youth. I'd rather have a club that's run like that because at least I can tell your ambition. Your ambition is to win trophies. And that is the key thing that under Wenger, in terms of the league, that we've lost. And that, I think, a new manager will replace. No, I, that's I, a great I think, point, man. That's a great point. I, I think it's a little bit further than Arsene. I think it's the back room. It's, 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 the it's, it's, it's everything for there is. It's a band aid. Look, it's, I don't. I don't know if it's a band aid. It's a. It's a change, man. It's admission that there's an issue here. Um, it's a step. Now, obviously, you're you're hundred percent right in saying it could blow up. Arsenal could end up just being a mid table team. But to Tom's point, you know exactly what you're getting with Wenger, and that's top four. He's saying he doesn't want to lose his club to become a top four club. No. Converted into a Tottenham, he's saying we should be that striving club, Man City, all that. So he'll take the risk of leaving that Wenger safe cocoon to 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 try that Chelsea method of one year we're seventh, but the next year we're winning. No, I, I fully understand, and I think you could have stayed with Arsenal if they bought better players. If they were able, I I <laughs> Puss. honestly, Puss. Puss, he did, how many excuses buying, does man? this man get? No, it's yeah. not at first it was at first it was okay. Stan Kroenke doesn't spend the money. Then he gives them a huge transfer, Kitty. We see the plays he brought in. He brought in Granite Shaka. That was one of his guys. He chose to bring in Nacho Monreal, who's oh, been man, a good man. player, but is he a world class left back? No, he brought in Koscielny, who he did pop. But then he also brought in Tommy, other brought guys. In who Nene, didn't. Mustafi, Shamak. In... There's been mad failures, dude, who just didn't oh. work out. So and I'm he never the, and he never brought in the number six, the Vieira. You can call Shaka a number six, but he's not. He's not Kante. You know what I mean? Like, that's Bro, what Arsenal that's his... needed, some muscle. And everyone knew that. The whole world was asking for that. And I feel that's like a Wenger's piece of Wenger biggest... was... He Go wanted ahead, to do it his way. Exactly. That's where I say the arrogance comes in because he, he had the recipe for success in the league. All he had to do was look at the blueprint of the Invincible squad and literally replicate it. Go out and look for very similar players. They may have not been of the same quality, but they, would have, they, they shared similarities. He went with... The, he tried to basically play like a Spanish style football in England with yeah, all yeah, these with little most, five yeah. six guys, and it doesn't work out like all right, we know that the champion okay. usually a taller but, and bigger. Real, Huss, last but, word, Huss, go ahead. Real quick though, who do you think is going to come in? Because there is Ancelotti, but is he going to come to a team like Arsenal? Because he's usually going to a top team that he can compete for Champions League. They got Luis Enrique, who's never really coached a team without. Uh, he's only like Barcelona where. The, you had the best players in the world. And then Simeone, is he going to leave, leave Mar- uh, Madrid? We don't know that. Who is he going to – Brendan Rodgers has been linked? Because if that's Brendan Rodgers goes to Arsenal, a, that's, that's going to be crazy. A, that's such a terrible link. 
um, by the way. Um, not That's no disrespect to Rodgers. It's just yes, I think that, that is. Arsenal, Arsenal job is it's a, it's a very attractive job. I think we can um, attract guys like Ancelotti, um, maybe not Simeone because of the Champions League and he has his whole thing over there. But a guy was sleeping on his uh, Yogi Lowe, um, the German national team coach. Um, that, that's another guy who's, who's been linked, who's been thrown out there. So With Barcelona. I said not Barcelona, uh, Bayern Munich. That Bayern Munich already reportedly already hired their next coach, um, Kovac. So that's out of the question. Thomas Tuchel has been floating around. He's been linked to a couple different places too, PSG and Tuchel, things like that. So see, Tuchel is we'll a see. guy I think would be fantastic for Arsenal. I know you want that gold chip guy who – but I don't, I don't think you understand the, the, the project that's needed at Arsenal to, like you said, to redefine ambition to Tuchel. I mean, what he's done with that Dortmund team, and obviously, you know, at the end it was kind of ugly, but historically what he did with them, man, he, he had them playing above their levels. He had them playing like Liverpool before they got Salah, where you like – you see what they're trying to do. They're just missing that gold chip player. Once you, know you plug what, in that gold chip player, it's coming together. Tucho would change your identity. He'd bring I don't up buy the that. youth as well. I don't, I don't buy that. I think Klopp started the Dortmund revolution. I think that is the <laughs> oh. true guy who began it. And then I think Tucho came in. He helped. He, had, he, he was all right. He, he helped boost him. But the core of those guys, a lot of them were Klopp guys. What about Vieira? And, and, came, and came from that success. So I, I don't think Tuchel's the guy. For me, he's a bigger risk than any of those coaches we just mentioned. I love Vieira um, to come in at Arsenal. I, I love that. Like, would he work out? I don't know. That's a major risk because that's more of a player, um, a legend of the club. But the one thing I can guarantee with Vieira, pride would be back, would be instilled in Arsenal. That grit, that grind, that toughness, that invincible, in, that, yeah, that invincible air would be reinstilled. So that's the thing. Now, their brand of football, I don't know. But that's why I'd, I'd, I'd definitely be down for Vieira. Cool. Let's keep it moving. Huss, we're talking about Klopp. Um, and here's the result, man. Chasing for second place while well, competing for top four, but trying to catch United. They stumble against West Brom here. Looks like Liverpool are back to their old ways. 2-2 at the <laughs> No, You know what, though? I... I said, what? well, I wish I was on the, the show. I was too busy, you know, that with the other work schedule. But I wish I was on the show with you guys last weekend. I was talking to other people about it. I was really worried about this game because West Brom normally plays Liverpool really hard. And also, I don't think all of Liverpool, is, their mind is on this game. They're thinking about Champions League completely. Yeah. Uh, and especially when they go 2 nothing up. When they get that second goal... I think everyone is completely checked out, including the players. Because some of those goals, I mean, the two goals for West Brom, those are definitely avoidable. <clears throat> yeah, look, the, first, the, the, the Rondon one is probably avoidable, but the dude is known for his aerial prowess, and Liverpool is known for struggling with set pieces. So that one, I think, is justified. The first one, probably not. Um, but this is Liverpool's way, right? But this week, mm -hmm. I actually don't blame him, because like you're saying, Hus. They have one eye in that Champions League. And I understand, like, as a professional, especially a top four player, top six player, you have to be able to have, you know, that laser focus on what's exactly in front of you and not be looking forward to the, the following week. But, man, it's been a while since Liverpool was playing this exciting brand of football. It's been a while since Liverpool was scary and an intimidating team. I think they let this game get away from them. But I think this might actually be a good thing for them going into that AS Roma Champions League tie this week in that they would have tasted that feeling of, oh, this is what happens when we take our foot off the gas. I think they'll be tuned up, ready to go for the Roma game. Whether they'll win, who the fuck knows? Because Liverpool's Liverpool. But I think this wasn't as bad a result going into a Champions League week. That I, leaky defense always comes back to bite you. I do think this was a pretty bad result, but will it affect them in the Champions League? I think what's great that Salah's confidence kept going. He got himself an excellent goal in this game. Yes. Just a really messy esque type finish where he just chipped it over the goalkeeper. Um, Alex Oxley Chamberlain giving him the assist there. So, in terms of going forward, the confidence is there. Um, it's just set pieces, man. Set pieces. Klopp was pissed off. 
after the game. Like you could tell he was not in the mood to answer any of the reporters' questions. Yeah. And I I just think that, you know, Liverpool, it's weird because we, we, we get on Man United for losing to West Brom. And then now we're kind of like taking it easy on Liverpool. Now is West Brom a, a, an animal trapped in a corner type of situation? Or is this a sign that Liverpool, that, that old Liverpool might be creeping back you know into the forefront? You know why we get on top of them, Tom? Is, like you said, it's the ambition. Liverpool is obviously trying to win the champ, uh, Champions League or the Premier League. But when they don't, their fans aren't as let down as, say, Man United fans or Chelsea or Man City currently. So it, it is mentality, man. That's why when Man United loses, the whole world, if you watch the media, it would make it look like United is one of the worst teams in the world. Meanwhile, you are every year since Mourinho has been there, man. we're improving year over year. We're touching silver. We're closer than we've ever been. I don't think City's going to have a freak year like this. I think they'll be good. I think they'll be the favorites hands down next season. I don't think they're going to go 100 goals again. No, it's also uh, other teams are going to spend more money. And then exactly. Liverpool has kind of given out the blueprint on how to beat City because they've beat them yeah. three out of four times that, this year. That Conte 3-4-3. Three, three. Yes. Uh, and you know what? A couple of things. One, uh, before this game, uh, I forget the exact numbers, but it was something like in the last 13 matches, all competitions, Liverpool have let up point. Five three goals a game or something. It was something ridiculous. They really seem to turn it around. I really believe that they were. It has nothing to do with the. Um, they will not bring this to Champions League. It had everything to do with the mentality of the West Brom game because they're thinking about the Champions League game. But the one thing that I, I wish Klopp would change a little, is that again he blamed the referee. And he blamed a dry surface. Yeah, the pitch. Yeah, the, referee, the, the pitch thing is the most ridiculous thing I've heard. I understand the ref. Fergie was the king of that. You got to jab at the ref when you, when you lose. Mourinho tends to do that as well, redirect. But as far as the pitch, man, there's nothing in the rules that say you have to water it. And now next season, by him complaining and making that an issue, you know every team – Below eighth place is going to play on a dry freaking pitch against this club. What well, makes Klopp, sense? Klopp was so salty yo, after the game. He, he he was commenting on the on the dry pitch, and he's like, "Oh, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll we'll be up here in the EPL, and they can basically they'll be down there with their dry pitch in the championship." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Damn, he's going in." Klopp went in, bro. Yeah. No, I mean, look. I mean, it makes sense for especially lower teams to have the dry pitch because Liverpool, the probably the biggest thing that they have going for them is their offensive threat with all that speed. They might have the fastest offensive threat in the league, maybe Man City. City. Um, or with Sterling, Sané, you're right. But I don't know. That would be, a, that'd be a, a fun. That would be a good one. I was thinking about this earlier. That's, yeah. that's actually funny. I was thinking but about it. They lose, they lose at the number nine because you throw in Jesus or Aguero is faster than Firmino. But I don't the know other, because, the wing position. I don't know, I don't know if Aguero is faster than Firmino. Yeah. Faster. He's quicker, but is he faster than Aguero? Then, uh, a Firmino could also smile at them, blind them a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you never know. But it makes sense for those teams to keep a dry pitch. You want to slow them down. You want any advantage that you can possibly get. So why water the grass? Why make the, the surface uh, faster than it has to be? No, West Brom did the right thing. If, as soon as – like if I'm any club, eighth place and below, I'm looking at you, Bournemouth, looking at you, Burnley too, even though they're not uh, quite eighth place. But I would do this playing Man City – I would do this playing Tottenham, and I would do this playing Liverpool. Those three clubs love to zip the ball around quickly. Next season, hey, we're going to cut our water bill 30% next year, not watering our pitch in these games. <laughs> Yo, Hus, Hus, actually, Hus, what, Hus, what do you think about Danny Ings getting a goal? It was like and, first goal since he came back. Uh, damn, look, damn, that's all you got no, for him? Damn, Hus, oh, no, no love for this guy. who your, your <laughs> manager has backed. Your manager said, okay. Yo, your job is safe. You played eh. three minutes in three seasons, but your job is safe. And eh. what does the big us Liverpool so, fan say? Eh. All right. When it comes down to it, you talked about it with United. It's about ambition. Danny Ings is not going to bring yeah. Champions League. Well, Danny Ings happens. is not going to bring uh, well, uh, the, the, the championship. Of How do you know? Man's only Danny played is not like 30 minutes. Four. Danny Ings <laughs> is not going to bring top oh. six. So when it comes down to it, 
look, when if he didn't get injured, I truly believe that he could have been a really nice uh, role player. But because of those injuries, look at that goal that he scored. The ball was just like flopping around. And he hit the ball in the back of the net. After that, it's called striker's instinct. But it's called after, but, but after that, what he do? He was gone. He was a mystery. <laughs> Up in Bro, the it was his first so, goal, and like. A, a really long man's been through it. You know who yeah. he was. Yeah. Oh, weird. An injury at Liverpool. Who else used to get injured all the time at <laughs> Liverpool? Oh, what's wrong no right courage. now? Hey. You need to rid your club of players like that. As much as you like them as a person, Dang this is a business. Hell. No, no. It's a business. Look, if you want to keep Jack Wilshere, you can keep him all day. Ooh, all right, business when it comes down to it, when right, comes down to it you got to get no rid bus. of those type of players. You got to. Work them up right now. Maybe you can sell them for like three mil. Work back half the price that you bought them for. And then you buy a player that is you can count on for all those matches. Damn. Love it, Huss. So cold. Business Huss. Uh, I mean, run like on the, the power headed to tie the game, man. This dude, after the, after the game, they were showing the scenes at the Hawthorns and, you know, the fan battery. It's basically, <laughs> uh, basically, you know, they they basically relegated. And Rondon was just, you know, doing laps around, saying hi to the fans and stuff. So it was a beautiful scene, man. It's always sad when that that taste of relegation finally hits your mouth. Yeah, they went down. It wasn't enough, but no, nah, it wasn't, man. Okay. Real quick touch: the rest of the game. So the EPL um, this past weekend, Watford played Crystal Palace zero zero here, stalemate. Yo, they were all over Wilfred. Zaha, Willy Zaha in this game. Fans were booing him for diving. Diving. Um, diving. Yeah, he just didn't even him die. Yeah, yeah. There <laughs> was got a some, yellow man, card. Some. He didn't even dive, man. It was supposed to be a PK. I hate refs that rep, ref based on reputation. I understand you have to take for into real. account the reputation. But to, 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 to just assume that my man is diving because he's constantly fouled. like I that asked that question is... Do players who dive get fouled? And yes, they do. So, and oftentimes take- they dive because they get fouled more than the average player. Mm. They have but to I'm, protect themselves. I wish that was a review. Sorry, reviewable moment right there. If someone gets, I wish your face wasn't red. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I wish I could backtrack and put some sunblock on. Uh, <laughs> when it comes oh, down to it, uh, I wish the refs had the ability to call up to somebody. And get that right, because look, if they're not going to dive, nice. someone should should get the the benefit of the doubt. If they are diving, and they do get the penalty call, that should be taken away, and they should get the yellow. That is the the one area that I, that penalties and goals right there that 100%. should always be reviewable in my mind. And just an FYI, guys, the Premier League clubs uh, reviewed a uh, not a bill, but whatever reviewed a proposal. To, to have VAR next year, and they voted no for it. Nope. So there's no VAR in the EPL next year. The, so the discussion is still there, but, man. I wonder why. I wonder dinosaurs. who's voting against it. It's, it's just old. old it's school. dinosaurs, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, and, dinosaurs. and they sabotaged it. The way they made VAR take 20 minutes to review a highlight, they, they sabotaged it. It doesn't 20 take, minutes? Not 20, but it took like three or four minutes. In a, Everyone's in just a like, game. oh, my God. Oh, my God. Slowing down the game. They, but it they, shouldn't they take three it. minutes is my point. It should take 60 seconds. We all sitting at home and we 30. can see it. They have 30 people. seconds. But 60 someone to start. Up, 60 someone to start. upstairs in London or somewhere else should be watching all the games. They Once do. that happens, boom, they, they have 60 seconds. That means the referee, after like explaining what's going on, they initially have 30 seconds. Absolutely. And then they tell the situation. All right, Stoke versus Burnley, 1-1 in this one. Looks like Stoke might be on their way out. Real quick, um, Jernan Shakiri, where is he next season? West Ham. Stoke get relegated. I hope West Ham. He should. He really Bash should go brothers. to West Ham. Cool. Love it, man. West Ham, that would be sick. Reuniting the Bash Bros. FA Cup semifinal. Man United, glory, glory, mofos. Repping the club right here on top of my head. They Get come back from a one nothing um, deficit against Spurs at Wembley. They go on to win two one. Leslie, big game. Sanchez gets himself a fade away. <laughs> Who was that? Who Leslie. was that? Oh, okay. Leslie, big game. Sanchez. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Oh, that. now y'all got love for Sanchez. Before it was 
oh, what's going on with this dude, yo? He's a fraud, man. Yo, he's oh, bringing that old Arsenal me. shit over. And our uh, and our prior ginger host Farid, uh, who said he wasn't top ten. That was your guys' debate. I was never involved in that. You were involved, whether you liked it or not. He's yeah, not man, top ten. Race, he, he, he's not top <laughs> ten at the moment. But you know what, though, I'll take Tiggy's back real quick. I believe it was like. Oh, you will take his. No, back. no, three weeks. Three weeks ago, Tiki, I, I believe it was Tiki that was saying that Sanchez next year will be a four. So this is just kind of like a, a little. Um, a little preview of what next year will probably be once he gets all the chemistry down with other players. Us, this is a little but, foreplay, bro. This is what he. This is a little foreplay from Sanchez. Is hey, not quite ready yet, but I'm warming up. But re- remember <laughs> that the look. This is Tottenham. This is United. Everyone thinking Tottenham. This is, they have to go for the trophy this year. This is this is the team. This is they have the the best striker in the. In England, maybe the world at the moment. They have Ericsson, who's linked with Barcelona because he's one of the best playmakers in the world. You have one of the best young players with Deli Ali. You have Dembele, who all the Spurs players have saying that he's the Spurs smartest was, player on the. the one look, everything well. everything no. seems to be lining up for Spurs, but yet everything always Trophy. falls apart for them. Now, it, maybe it could be the players that have, don't have the killer instinct, or maybe it's Pochettino that doesn't have that necessary in game. Tactical switch that Jose Mourinho have has that he they, wins they just can't get over Pochettino the hump. doesn't. They uh, can't get who, over the hump. Who's the leader of Spurs? Uh, you you would think maybe because the face is Harry Kane, but then they say Dembele is the the thinker of the team, the brain. The, but the, the fact exactly. that you're like searching around, there's the point. They don't have that dude. They have a bunch of talented guys, but there's no guy who. Is just bleeding, you know, navy blue and white for that club. They all love the club for sure. Harry Kane came through the system, blah, blah, blah. It's really hard, first of all, for a forward to inspire an entire team. Very few forwards can do that. And I don't think it's fair to put that on Harry Kane yet. But they, they don't have that dude. As soon as Man United tied that game up, man, you just looked around. Everyone had their heads down. And to be fair, Tottenham was still playing. I'm not saying they weren't trying to win. But you could see in their faces there was... Bruh. That that that, there's two mistakes, two mistakes cost them, man. And Musa Dembele losing, I mean, well done by Pogba to to strip him of the ball, played a perfect chip into the box for a well cushioned header by Alexis. And then the other one under Herrera, you don't expect him to get a goal, but the ball goes under, the ball goes under Vorm. And no, um, no, it was not Davies. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It went through Davies leg. Yeah, sorry. through Davies, but like under the goalie. So it, it counted as an error against him there. Two mistakes, two crucial mistakes. That's what seems to happen with Spurs is when we put the expectations on them. Like, okay, this is a this is a favorable matchup. That's when they crumble, when the spotlight gets bigger, it seems. Does Larice save that shot? I say yes because probably. I rate him. but Probably I'm, not because he goes to use his hands instead of his feet. No. He doesn't use his feet like that. He doesn't have the, the head kick saves, man. Yeah, man. It, it's interesting, dude. If this is, look, Spurs, I get it. This is typical Spurs. But every time this happens, they get closer and closer. The question I have for you guys is can they hold all their players together this summer? Never mind bringing in new talent, bringing in A class prime beef. I'm just saying this summer, their prime beef talent, can they hold on to them? I, I think I think Kane Champions, I think Kane is going to stay. I, I think he's going to stay for one more year. I think the 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 two people that will have a, a good chance of leaving is Ericsson and Toby, Toby Alderwater. I can't say his name, but <laughs> I just did it just for you guys. Thank but you guys. Toby looks to be out. Ericsson, if he takes the bait from Barcelona, who can definitely play with Barcelona. He could very well be out. It, I think. Look, I think. I think they lose a couple of defenders. Maybe I think, uh, Danny Rose is definitely leaving, and um, Toby's a possibility. Um, other than that, I think those are the, the the primary two guys who would leave. Yeah, but oh. you know what though, Rose is interchangeable at the moment because he barely played this year. Uh, they they looked pretty good. Toby, he'll hurt a little bit, but the main thing is keeping that offensive threat together. If Erickson stays. And obviously, Harry Kane, I I said before, if they stay and they keep that front four together, I think they'll be good. They, I I think they have enough talent in the back and enough scouting. But even in the in the game, 
it just seemed look technically the it's a home game because that um because they had yeah, a Wembley. switch stadiums and even dire hitting posts it just seems like it's almost like bad luck yeah definitely absolutely no, they just suck they choke <laughs> Man so United through to the final here, man. My boy Under Herrera showing dudes he still got it. On the other side of the semifinal, we got Chelsea. TC being Southampton here, 2 nothing. Really not much to report here. Um, man, Hampton had their chances, bruh. The Hampton should have put him away. Shane Long with a raw touch. I'm sorry, he was dude. in, touching around um, Caballero. Willie Caballero had some special saves in this game, man. Charlie Austin. Of course, hitting the post, man. He's always involved. I'm um, just going to get the goal. But, I mean, this was just star power um, that, that Southampton could not handle here. Eden Hazard stepping up. Okay, it's against Southampton. But nonetheless, stepping up in a game where he needed to. Olivier Giroud. I haven't said that in a while. Wow, that sounded weird. Um, Giroud. <laughs> yeah, that sounded definitely weird. It didn't have the same ring either. So it was nah, kind of like It was hollow. It was, it was almost hollow. like you were talking about it your ex-girlfriend. Hollow. Yeah, Whoa. it was it was, it was, it was hollow <laughs> for sure. There was some hurt there. There was there was there was some hurt. But I'm very composed finish, man. And then Morata, man. The Aspi Quelta Morata connection is real. Yeah, man. I'm tired, tired, tired of uh Conti out there on the sideline looking like that drunk uncle we all have, man. It's, <laughs> it's uh and shout out to Across the Pond for that tweet they had. Um, about that, but I had the same thought earlier today, and I was telling my wife, yeah, it's so weird, man. You just see him, and he's just he's in pain, dude. Like, he's doing his best, he still cares. And obviously, you know, in a down season, he still finds a way to get he's it plugging holes. Yeah, he finds a way to get to the to the uh, a cup final. But here's my question, man subbed off, um, a little prematurely, in my opinion, in his opinion as well. I'm talking about Willian coming off in the 64th minute with the game delicately in balance towards Chelsea at one nothing. Uh, Bakayoko comes on for him. Willian goes straight down the tunnel, absolutely upset. You can see him shaking his head, mumbling words to himself as the camera zoomed in on him when he was getting off the field. Is uh, Willian at Chelsea next year? It is uh, Conti at Chelsea next year? No, Conti's not. Then I think he is. Then I think Willian does stay. Cool. Even if Conte's at Chelsea, I believe that Williams staying. Williams already came out and said that he wants to retire at Chelsea. This was uh, last year, I believe. Um, look, I've, he's he's won. We've heard players say that he's before. won the league with him so much uh, multiple times. He's gone down. He's gone up. It's just one of those things where Williams. He, I think he's a Chelsea faithful. I think he's going to be retiring with them. I, uh, the, the big thing with Chelsea for me, though, Hazard gets an assist. He had a goal two times ago, but when Southampton lost that match to Chelsea two weeks ago, uh, when they were up two, lost a 3-2, in my mind, I was already checked out because I knew that Southampton had no chance in this game. If they had won that game, I think they had a chance. But because they had the 2-0 two, two lead, they lost it to Chelsea, I was like, nope, Chelsea's going to prey on them. They're going to just annihilate these guys. And when it comes down to it, yes, Southampton had their chances, but Chelsea just – it took care, care of business. Too good. 10% Absolutely, better. man. <laughs> Thanks for these updates. I'm loving it. <laughs> um, yeah, that wraps it up for the FA Cup semifinal. So Man United will face Chelsea. I was really hoping for Southampton, some nice bread and butter for Man United, but it'll have to be earned the hard way. But Jose in a cup final against his ex-wife, dude. We'll see if hmm. he can uh, find a way to ruin Conti's deck. Uh, but again, this this brings up uh, another case with Pochettino, where even when we can say it's um, a disappointing season, I guess, with United, because we all said, oh, the second year with Mourinho, that's the year that they have a really good chance of winning the league. They, they, they got bounced out of uh, Champions League by Sevilla, but they mm-hmm. still have a chance at an FA Cup. For me, in, day in, in present day, there's only two trophies that really matter. To me, it's winning the league and it's winning Champions League. Yes, FA Cup is nice to have, but eh, like it's, eh. A, it's a big cup. Uh, Huss. Huss. FA Cup is a, a big cup. Bro. It, 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 it's a big cup, but I'm it, with you, Huss. In that, Tom, you guys won what three FA Cups in a row, two in a row, and it wasn't enough. I 100% agree with you, Huss. Look, I will take this because uh, an FA Cup is better than no FA Cup, 
-hmm. But I don't see this FA Cup final as a replacement for the Premier League or, or not a replacement, but a consolation. Not, not at making all. the Premier League, not the not Champions League. But let's not take away too much credit from this FA Cup, dude. It's still a prestigious trophy to win. It's a domestic trophy. Every country has a, a domestic it's competition. A, it's, a, it's a bronze medal. It's a bronze it is. medal. That's Recall all it is. Time. Champions Recall. League, gold. League is silver. Ah. And the, depending on how you want to view it, right? Yeah. Like, if you're Real Madrid, Champions League's probably gold. You know, if you're, if you're an English team, the league is gold because of the amount of revenue you make. So Yeah, I think the exact it, opposite. It, it, it can flip-flop, but at the end of the day, the League Cup is that bronze medal. And it is a little bit of a fallback. When you don't win the league, you don't win the... the, the the, ch- the Champions League, then you're going to yeah. be like, okay, look, Something. we had a decent season. We can work off this going into next year. And okay. it could be back-to-back, right, if I'm not mistaken, for Mourinho back-to-back FAs? Am I crazy? Uh, did Arsenal win it last year? I think you, Mourinho did win it. Le- I yeah, think United that's... won that, and they, or was it the, yeah, they won that, the Carabao, and the community. Yeah, the, it's your ghetto have. treble. Yeah, the ghetto, ghetto is, treble. It is, it is, uh, it is, <laughs> but, uh, but put it this way. If, if Jose wins the FA Cup this year, he's 5%. won the same amount, if not more, than Liverpool have in the last 10 years. And that's big for – I mean, that shows no, that's how not well. big because well, Manu well, is bigger than Liverpool. Uh, oh, oh, not, 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 as, not, as a total, not as a total. In the hey, last, just because your face is red, total, you support Liverpool. We have more, be, silverware, yes. we have more silverware than you since – In the last 20 left, years, dude. yes, but not, not in total. In the last three years. In we parallel, have more silverware in, in the last season. Total. In the last the pride, one season. You can hear the pride parallel, coming out. <laughs> we are still better than Liverpool ever above you at the table, bro. So, you so know, when Liverpool wins the Champions League this year, they'll have more European trophies than – Ooh, best bread. Dude, but over 38 <laughs> games, you guys are a bunch of choke artists. Uh, when it comes down to it, don't. Oh, okay. Okay. Sevilla. So, uh, so anyways, uh, when it comes down West to it. Bro. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's talk about Juventus Napoli. So, yeah, so when it, this, this All right, fine. Let's, go, let's go there. Let's go there. No, 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 let's quick. Let's, wrap it up. Go ahead. No, I was, I was going to give a compliment to Jose where, with all that being said, he's still finding a way with some sort of trophy. Even though that everything seems to be subpar, nah, you got to win, he's bro. Still you found a way to get us. What that does Getting is buy him. Enough. It buys him money. It it buys him more transfer kitty next summer because you know based mil. on this season, United spending three hundred mil, and then we're gonna get guys who are proven because Mourinho likes twenty eight plus year olds. So it it buys him. He's showing. The, the, the world or the club, at least, the board. Like, look, we can win the Premier League. We're winning FA Cup back-to-back, blah, 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 or at least FA Cup final. The squad's not that bad. Game we hasn't pick been up, played yet. Exactly. No, no, not – sorry, the final, at least. We okay, made two okay. back-to-back finals. That's not a bad team. But if we can pick up, I don't know, Vidal in midfield to back up Pogba, if we can pick up maybe Toby to shore up their defense or blah, 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 the team's not that far. So I think winning the FA – or at least getting the FA Cup final and winning it last year – Buys Mourinho an extra hundred million dollars in cash because it shows the team is not that far away from at least competing with Man City. Well, you're gonna, gonna have, have it. it. He's gonna have it anyway, man. You guys are the That's the, the closest team to right. beating Manchester well, City. You're also gonna have another hundred and fifty million to spend anyways because you're gonna sell Pogba or yeah. Pogba, sorry, no, Pogba's gonna Whoa, leave. hot take. Yeah, hot take. That's fine. <laughs> I'm take one oh, good. I'm not buying on that one. Juventus zero, <laughs> Napoli one. The Serie A, we thought it was over. We thought it was done and dusted with Juventus running away from it. Napoli has come ferociously beating Juventus in Turin. one nothing. 89th or 90th minute. Guess who gets the goal here? The hero, the house. guy who's linked with all kinds of clubs. Haven't uh, I been saying summer. I want this dude at Arsenal? The Bali power header from a corner kick. And this was also uh, Benatia was the guy who was responsible for marking Kulubali. I bring this up because he's also the same guy who caused the penalty kick against oh, Lucas Vazquez bad. in the Real Madrid tie. This dude's not about this life. And um, <laughs> it was a great ball by Jose Callejon um, delivered in there. But a towering header, man. Absolutely towering header. This game was epic. It means that. The Serie A race is still on one point separating Juventus and Napoli. And the fact that Napoli was able to go to Juventus' house and win there, I think may go on to spur their confidence and have them win out. So the pressure now is a lot, is a lot more on Juventus. 
Look, I, I, I like this team. I like this Napoli team. And look, Koulibaly, I think a lot of teams are linked with him. So I think a lot of people want him. I mean, me personally, being a Liverpool fan, Koulibaly next to Van Dijk, that'd be Jesus. that'd be splendid, especially with Twin the offense. Towers. That would be oh illegal, bro. That's yeah. too much power, bro. Oh, my goodness. I don't know why they don't spend the money just bringing this guy in. But then again, uh, Napoli, footwork, I really am pulling for Napoli for multiple reasons. One, I, I think it would be great for the, the Italian league just because Juventus has a monopoly. Also, um, I, I think Napoli is so close to a Liverpool system where they have the speedsters up front. They have the offensive power. But when it comes down to it, again, I just want someone else to change of guard. I don't want Juventus winning. I, I don't want the same old, same old. I want someone really challenging and taking over for at least one year. Dude, I love it. And shout out to my man, Marek Hamsik, dude. Still out there rocking the crazy hair. Still doing it. Loyalty with this guy. Loyalty. Yeah, man. He had, he had multiple short chances team. of the last four four seasons to leave yeah. when he was peaking, but chose to stay at Napoli. He, he says he wants to retire there, too. Yeah, he's 30, man. So that, that, that cap opportunity to jump. You know, he's an old thirty, huh? Club. Yeah, man, he's very he's aged. An old thirty. Might be a birth certificate thirty if you catch him. Yeah, pretty yeah. dude. Got the haircut <laughs> of an uh, early twenty-year-old though. Yeah, man, his hair's still epic. Not as epic <laughs> as it was back in the day. Him, I feel like him and Al Sharawi were having like a quiet, silent competition because their hair week <laughs> to week was insane. Like, <laughs> few, few don't, don't sleep on a tour of Vidal. You bust oh, it in on that scene. Too, man. It's all the <laughs> Aztec warrior, bro. You better come That's to the United. Warrior. <laughs> get together with Lechi no, Sanchez. No long doors. <laughs> <laughs> man, we're talking prank calls way back from the early 2000s. That was so funny, man. Um, all right, guys. Thank you for listening. Anything else before we wrap it up, fellas? No, I appreciate the love on um, Facebook, social media, Twitter, and all that. Uh, for sure, make sure to check us out. Um, go to our store at um, Podcast FC Show Shop. And um, yeah, all the all that. Just keep showing us love, man. Keep um, downloads coming. Five star ratings on iTunes. That's this what it is. All PSU you need Nation. to know right now. This is all you need to know. If you love listen, it, you'll learn. Love it, guys. Thank you for listening, guys, and we will catch you next time. Peace.